Hmm. As you can see, Prince Vegeta and I took care of your little android problem. Or oh, wait, did they really? Hey guys, DB right here, and today I am back with... What if Sarbon turned good? And what was quite the controversial... part in the, well, previous part, you know, we had Zarbon resorting to quite unusual methods with getting the job done. First, um, blowing up, um, rainforest and mountain ter range terrain just to capture Dr. Giroux, and then interrogating him, promising to let him go, go if Dr. Giroux tells him where his lab is. Only to have Dr. Giroux, um, not keep his word and kill Dr. Giroux anyway. So yes, even though, Doc even though Zarbon is indeed fighting on the good guy's side, Zarbon is still very much a Freezer Force soldier. Still has that mentality and military mind. So, well, it may have been good for, um, getting to Giroux and um, essentially blowing up his lab. However, his, um, and the Prince Vegeta's overconfidence may have just cost him dearly. And well, as Android 17 and 18's pods were um, awakened due to the disturbance, they, along with Android 16, are cruising the highway on their way to Mount Palzu right now to kill Goku and no one is aware of this because they thought they were destroyed in the explosion and remember they can't sense the energy of the androids <coughs> but luckily like in the original the androids are taking the scenic route and um well Everyone is pretty much getting ready to go their separate ways, go back home. Piccolo thinking to look in on Mount Palzu with, um, you know, see how Gohan is doing and, um, of course, checking on Goku, as it were. And, um, well, this is where suddenly Piccolo gets a message in his head, telepathically, from Kami. Piccolo, you must come to the lookout at once. What is it? What do you want? Just get here immediately. I will fill you in once you arrive. And, um... Well... Krillin... Is pretty much... On his way back to Kame House. And, um... Future Trunks is um, pretty much on his way back to Capsule Corp. To look in on his mother and, um... Well, past self... Make sure they're actually all right and okay after, you know, today's little trauma. And, um... Well? And Vegeta's sort of out pouting somewhere. Because, well, even though he's figured it's kind of a bummer he didn't actually get to fight the androids himself, they couldn't have been worth his time if they were destroyed in an explosion like that. Ha! Huh. Saiyans reign supreme as always. And, um, well... Um, Piccolo arrives on Mount, at Mount Palzu, much like in the um, original st story, and Kami is filling him in that not only are the androids alive and well that there is some sort of new threat lurking around the shadows. In fact, Kami has been sort of sensing this threat for um, the last few years. But this threat has um, suddenly become a lot more bigger and a lot more worse. And, well, it may be a threat that um, may turn out to be beyond the androids. And, um, well... Piccolo and Kami begin discussing Fusion, the possible of becoming the nameless Namekian once again. And, um... While Piccolo 
is more or less all for it, as long as they can use his body, um, Kami wants to see how this new threat is going to play out. Now, in the um, meantime, though, remember, Piccolo can talk to Gohan telepathically. So, he, while he's meditating, waiting for Kami to make up his mind, he is immediately talking to Gohan telepathically. Gohan, listen to me. You have to get your father away from Mount Palzu immediately. The androids are still alive. I'm afraid all that explosion did was wake him up. And, well, Gohan is quickly saying this to um, Yamcha and Chi Chi, who are pretty much on the phone immediately to um, Capsule Corp. And so, with that, Future Trunks is realizing, okay, the, f the threat is not over yet. And so Bulma, along with, um, tr along with Trunks, and Krillin, who also got um, a phone call from Bulma, who was able to fly out and intercept Bulma and Future Trunks, they're all on the plane and all ready to um, move Goku to, um, well, to Kame House. And this is actually where um, Bulma this time receives an interesting phone call, and it's from her father. Because this time, with Bulma not at home, it's actually up to either Bulma's father, father and mother to intercept the message from the stranger who um, calls in the other time machine. You know, the one that's all wrecked and ruined. And, um, well, Zarbon had just arrived and um, is hearing about this himself. And, um, well... Bulma asks them to send the send the send her a fax and a photograph of the machine, and um, Trunks is able to identify that it's his time machine, and basically he and Gohan are going to take a look at it. But since Bulma right now is flying the capsule plane to um, move Goku to Kame House, she's not going to be going with him this time, and well. After Zarbon receiving the same um, coordinates, he's on his way to uh, intercept the time machine as well with um, Future Trunks and Gohan. And um, as um, Gohan and Trunks arrive essentially at the site, a couple of minutes later, Zarbon arriving. And all three of them begin looking at the old beat up time machine. And, well, it had clearly have been standing there for a while. After all, there is, um, moss and all sorts of, um, little bits of, um, plant-like life forms growing on the machine. Um, the, the, um, caps, the, um, cockpit's been damaged. There's, um, a hole through the protective shielding. And, um... I don't understand it, Trunks. How could this be your machine? How could you let it get into this such dis disrepair? And well, Trunks throws his own Dino Cap out and reveals that he does indeed have his time machine that he came in he here with, but this is clearly the same machine. Did he perhaps make another trip and something go wrong? Or is something else behind this? And this is where Gohan spots the um, elder shellings of Cell. And they um, also manage to discover the um, weird purple-like egg. And, um, well, before they could really um, move on, now, Trunks decides to um, store this um, time machine away into a capsule. Can't exactly leave a time machine just lying around. I mean, what if the thing still works and someone else happens to find it? Doc Brown, Emmett Brown would not be happy. So, best to just seal it away and, um, well, this is where they sense a bunch of, um, a high power level and it seems to have familiar energy. They are sensing Vegeta, Goku, even Piccolo. 
So they are flying immediately to um, investigate it. And um, essentially, they end up arriving at Gingertown. Now this time around, the biggest difference here is that Cell hasn't drank everybody up yet. Ginger's, Ginger Town still has a, at least half its population left. And well, with um, Cell going on the attack and absorbing and putting the entire city into a panic, and after Zarbon, Gohan and Trunks arrive, warning everyone to get away, there's pretty much a free on one, one fight between Zarbon, Future Trunks and Gohan It would seem that you could actually put up a decent fight, Trunks. And you must be Gohan. What? How do you know our names? <laughs> that information is no important. You are about to die. And well, this is where Kami and Piccolo finally decide to do their Nomeki infusion. And now we've got the Piccolo the Super Namek and Nameless Namekian, on his way at high speed. Vegeta is also sensing this, and um, even the android droids are um, seeing all, all the explosions from a distance from where they're driving from, and they're wondering what's going on. Hmm, perhaps these are the same people that destroyed our home. Referring to the laboratory, Seventeen, it's weird that you refer to that place as home. That place was a creep factor. <sighs> Whoever blew that place up did us a favor. And Sixteen's like, there's an incredible fight happening over there. However, I sense that one is immensely more powerful than the others. The other three fighting this being will die shortly. And well, that however turns out not to be the case because King Piccolo arrives less than a minute later and luckily for everyone, everyone is still in relatively good condition. And um, in the uh, meantime, we've also had, uh, we also got Tien and Krillin who's on the way who have also sensed this energy and need to um, check this out. Meanwhile, Yamcha is staying with Bulma and Chi Chi who are still transporting Goku. And well, hmm. hmm. I can't say I'm not familiar with this one, referring to Zarbon. Zarbon, who's actually giving Cell a pretty decent fight in. in his, um, battling. Just, just due to the fact that Zarbon's a little less predictable than the others, and the fact that Cell has no data on him as well. Hmm. Hmm. My name is Zarbon. I used to be a member of the Freezer Force. Freezer, ah, yes. He's part of me too. What? And well, this is where Zarbon is more or less knocked for a loop. And then Piccolo joins the battle. And from there, things take off what they do per normal. With um, Piccolo battling with Cell. And um, eventually getting to the point where he um, lets himself get partially absorbed by the monster pretending to be all weakened and helpless. And since everyone else is not showing much sign in, in doing much at the moment, Cell thought he would win, and he decided a monologue giving them all the information about who he is. I am Dr. Giraud. I came here in a time machine that I stole from that one over there. And, well, this explains the extra time machine mystery. That's right, Trugs. I had killed you and taken your time machine for myself to transport myself back to a time where Android 17 and 18 are alive. And what are they to you? You see, I must absorb them in order to become complete 
and be and enter perfection. Well, we're not gonna let you do that. Piccolo rips off his arm and regenerates. Right, Sarban, you ready to go all in? And well, Piccolo King, uh, well, uh, Piccolo begins powering up. <sighs> I'm sorry, guys, I've had King Piccolo in my head lately with the um, recent what if I did about them, so I, I've been, yeah, nearly saying that every time I go to say Piccolo. So, Piccolo and Zarbon begin powering up, and Zarbon, for the first time since Planet Namek, actually uses his transformation. And well, Piccolo and Zarbon attack together, and um, well, with this extra arm um, power that Zarbon has got, he's gone beyond the ropes of what a Super Saiyan's capable of. So, in other words, this isn't really good news for um, the Cell, and well, this is where Tien and Krillin more or less arrive, and well, he gets a good look at Tien, and he's like, that's it. And well, this is where Cell uses his solar flare and makes his getaway. And well, Tien and Krillin are wanting to know what has happened here. We'll wait till Vegeta arrives. Then I'll fill you all in. And well, with that, Piccolo and the others fill the others in on who Cell is and what his business is here. The androids? What are you talking about, Namekian? I had already destroyed them. Yeah, me and Vegeta had already destroyed them. What are you talking about? Trust me, they're alive. And if Gohan hasn't done what I've told him, Goku's probably breathing his last breaths right now. Oh, don't you worry about that, Piccolo. We got Goku out of there in time. Go on and got your message, and we got right on it. Luckily, Bulma's capsule planes are really quick. He should be at Master Roshi's place right now. And, well, Vegeta is, um, scoffing at this. He is angry at the kind of power he's, um, witnessed displayed. First, he's going to Piccolo. You! Explain that new power! And, of course, they fill him in about Namekian's fusion and Piccolo's merge with Kami. And then he's angrily approaches Zabon. And you! You've been holding back on our training sessions this whole time. How dare you make me feel so small! Well, I can't help it, Vegeta. I've always been stronger than you. Gah! Very well. You two have had your laugh, your moment in the sun. But I, Prince Vegeta, shall ascend. I shall go beyond Super Saiyan and find the next level. Father, is that really possible? And well, Vegeta is off. And, um, well, much like in the original, Trunks and Krillin go off to have a better look at Dr. Giroux's lab, because, well, if that hadn't have been destroyed, what else hadn't they missed? And, well, apparently, just like um, Cell had informed him, there is a basement to the lab, a lower level to the lab, where there is indeed a supercomputer working on Cell, and, well, just like in the original, Trunks takes the plans for Android 17 and 18, and essentially Krillin and him destroy the lab, and Krillin gets to destroy Cell. And well, with um, things sort of beginning to balance in the good guy's favor a little bit, I think this is actually a pretty good spot to leave things for right now. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this part of the story? How are um, things going to fare with Zarbon in the addition? Will Cell be able to um, achieve his perfect form, or will they actually be able to um, prevent it this time? After all, we do have an extra player in the game with Zarbon, and his um, power power in his um, transformation state is almost on par with um, Piccolo's. And, um, well... 
all these questions and more next time as we continue with this what if. Catch you later.